In the case of Brazil, since the 1970s, the fertility has been declining a lot. So we have a lower proportion of the population, the population under the age of 15. And still we don't have uh, as much of uh, elderly population. So the proportion of those with at least 65 of years of age is still low. So we have a lot of population in working ages between 15 and 64 uh, years of age. And so this is a good time for the country in terms of implementing policies to generate jobs and train the population in terms of education. And, uh, and this, uh, this time is going to finish around 2030 because after that we're going to have a higher proportion of the population in older groups. So we're going to have to implement some policies related to retirement. So right now we have to target this population between 15 and 64 years of age. This specific research was done only for people between uh, 15 and 64 years of age, so not including children and older, uh, the older population. And what we saw is like between 15 and 64 years of age, the population is getting older and better educated. Older people and better educated, they have uh, positive impacts in their earnings. But now we have more people competing in the labor market with uh, higher education and higher and, and older people. So we, uh, we saw that there, there was a negative impact on their earnings, mostly like in the past, 1970s, 1980s. But now, since the market needs those people with better education, their earnings is not decreasing anymore. So we saw a, neg a negative impact, but it's not uh, as big anymore because the country needs people with better education and, and higher experience in the labor market. Mm -hmm. If we look at previous studies about the baby boom uh, here in the U.S., we, we expected that like a higher, uh, bigger cohort with better educated people you would have negative impact on their earnings. And so we saw that in the past, but also related to other studies here in the U.S., we also saw that we also know that the market is going to change, it's going to require people with better education. And that's exactly what has been happening in Brazil. And in this case of Brazil, we divided the country in 502 areas, what we call micro regions. So we're really taking into account the differences, not just across time between 1907 and 2010, but also among the areas. So we still have some areas that have a lot, a lot of negative impacts because they, uh, they don't have a, an economy that well developed, but uh, the, the, these impacts, they are really related to what we have been seeing the literature for other countries. Taking into account these findings, we think that um, we have to still improve a lot of education in, in the country and also improve the, the training, the professional training of the population, technical training, and we still have a low proportion of the population with secondary education and also with college education. So we have to improve that. And as I said before, we uh, did this analysis for several areas. In the northeast of Brazil and northwest of Brazil, we still have a really high proportion of the population with really low levels of education. So we have to uh, improve uh, public education for this population. And by this way, they will have, we, uh, we would decrease even more uh, income inequality in the country. If decision makers take into account that education, it still varies a lot in the country and we still have to do a lot of policy related to that, who is going to benefit with uh, this kind of policy are going to be exactly the poor population in the country. And some policies have been taken into account already by, by the federal government. For example, we have a conditional cash transfer program targeted for people uh, under the, the poverty line. So these people that get this conditional cash transfer program, they have to uh, leave their, their kids on school. So you have a positive impact on education in the future. And also the federal government has been implementing some professional technical training for the, the, the population, usually for the young people uh, around like the secondary education. So all that, all these kind of policies in terms of education and training will benefit the country as a whole, 
but they have to be targeted for this population that's under the poverty line. And we also have to know that the country has a lot of disparities comparing the southeast of the country, south, to the north.